Hi, I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making short rib ragu. Look at that. Mm. I want to stop here for a second and remind you to like and subscribe, and as always, the recipe's in the description down below. Chef Frank, what is a ragu? Great question. A ragu, or R-A-G-U, is an Italian meat-based sauce that is usually served with pasta. And this is my version of that. Here's what I got for the ingredients. Whole peeled tomatoes, celery, carrots, onions, pancetta, olive oil, red wine, Parmesan rinds, bay leaf, tomato paste, chopped garlic, chili flake, one can of water, and we'll get into that in a little while. Basil leaves, basil stems tied together with some orange rind, and short ribs. For my ragu, I like to use short ribs. Um, and these are short ribs on the bone. You can get these without the bone. But what I love about these is that once they're cooked, they have a really nice texture and a great flavor. I try and find fatty ones. Uh, the bone here does give us a little extra flavor, but if you can't find it on the bone, that's fine. Um, one thing about on the bone that bothers me is that sometimes they slip in these little ones with not a lot of meat, but I'm still gonna use them. So try and find short ribs that are nice and fatty, have a lot of meat on the bone. Cool? Great, so what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna turn my flame on and then I'm gonna season these up. My pot is getting hot, season them up really well. And this is kind of our start of our sauce, right? We have the pot, we're gonna add some of our olive oil just to coat the bottom. And we're gonna start browning these off. And the browning of these basically starts our layers of flavor that I want, right? A little bit of the brown, uh, crustiness here, starts a really good flavor for our sauce. Be careful not to put too much in. I don't think I can fit all of them into this, uh, so I'm not gonna put all of them in. I'll do them in two batches. But I'm on a high heat, and I'm gonna try and brown them over all sides. Right, so now that they're brown, and I don't need them to be like super brown and dried out. I just want them to be nice and golden brown. Turn them. And I'm just gonna keep turning them until they're brown on all sides. You might have to adjust your heat. If the bottom of the pot is getting too dark, lower your heat a little, right? So this is what I'm looking for. Uh, we're nice and brown, right? We're starting that nice browning process. These can come out, go on my plate, and I'll do the next batch. You can see what's on the bottom of my pan is called a fond. Or the French call it a fond, F-O-N-D. And that is kind of the flavor base of a lot of sauces. And that's what I like about this. Whenever my grandmother made uh, a meat sauce, she would always keep all those brown bits on the bottom of the pot. So these are nice and brown. I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna grab the rest of my ingredients and we can get the, the rest of the sauce going. Now that our short ribs are brown, let's build the rest of the sauce, okay? My oil is hot, my fat it has all those nice little bits in it. Um, if, you, if there's not a lot of fat in the pan or if it's too dark, you can get rid of it and start with fresh oil. Just leave all the brown bits in the bottom of the pot. Uh, I don't think I need any more. I'm gonna take some diced pancetta. I'm gonna throw that in. And I always find whenever you do a tomato sauce, even if it's a beef-based sauce, pork always makes it taste better. It gives it a nice kind of round, rich flavor. And I'm just gonna cook this until it starts to brown lightly. I'm not gonna go crispy with this. Okay, so our pancetta is getting some color. We're gonna add our onions. At this point, I'm gonna add my bay leaf as well. And I'm gonna cook these onions until they just start to caramelize. If it seems a little dry, you can always add just a little more fat. I've always liked tomato sauces, especially meat sauces when they have that like layer of fat on top. And that's kind of like where you dip your bread into. My onions are starting to get a little bit of color. I'm gonna add my celery and my carrots. I'm just gonna let those go a little. I don't really wanna get color on this. I just want to um, start to cook them down. The celery and the carrots and the onions add some sweetness to this sauce. Um, there's different ways that you can make your sauce kind of mellow and not acidic. Um, you can add a lot of vegetables that have a little sugar in them. You can add sugar to your sauce, which I really never do. You can cook it for a long time. You can add basil. For the most part, I like to just use vegetables and cook them down. So it's a little dry, so I'm just gonna finish my olive oil and let these cook. Let's add our garlic uh, and our chili flakes. So chili flake goes in. I'm gonna add my garlic now. You notice I add my garlic last. Uh, garlic just cooks a lot faster than the other vegetables and I don't want to uh, burn it, okay? Uh, one thing people think that the Italians love lots of garlic. And they do like garlic, but I think that uh, when things came over from Italy to America, 
they tend to get a little exaggerated and people just throw tons of garlic and things. Uh, my grandmother actually didn't really like garlic itself. She liked the flavor. So she would normally cook the garlic in the oil and take it out. Uh, but Italian food doesn't tend to be strong like that where it's just like so much garlic and it like kind of kicks you in the face. So we're just gonna let that cook for a minute or two. And like I said earlier, we're kind of building layers of flavor. We brown our meat, we brown our pancetta, we start to brown our vegetables, right? Uh, and you can dump everything into the pot and it'd probably be a pretty good sauce, uh, but this is gonna have a little more depth of flavor. It's gonna be a little bit richer. Um, at this point, I'm gonna add a little salt as well because I like to season as I cook. And I always tell my students that if you don't season your food and then add salt at the end, everything's salty. But if you season throughout the cooking, usually you have a more rounded and a more rich flavor, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna add my tomato paste. Now, I use a little tomato paste for richness. Uh, it gives my sauce a little body. And I'm just putting a little in there and I'm gonna just start to kinda toast it a little. Get it a little toasty. You can see if you look down to the bottom of my pan, I'm starting to get that nice fond on the bottom and that's what I want. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna add my red wine. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pick up a lot of those brown bits on the bottom. And it's also gonna give me some nice acidity and some nice like richness to my sauce. So I'm gonna let that cook. I'm gonna scrape the bottom and try and get all those little brown bits off of the bottom. I'm gonna cook until I don't smell alcohol anymore, right? I don't want the wine there to taste boozy or be sharp. I want the alcohol to cook off. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna add my bundle of herbs, right? This is the, the stems from my basil. I have basil here that I'm gonna add later. I like to add the leaves later on, kind of towards the end of cooking, but the stems have a ton of flavor. And I like um, a little bit of orange rind. I like the flavor of orange. Um, I think it gives a little sharpness to the sauce, but I always use a little bit of orange rind. That goes in. And then I can throw my, my tomatoes in right now too. Okay, uh, I have a can of tomato water, right? So when I open these cans, I rinsed out with some water. And I used to think that this was just my grandmother being frugal. And basically what it really is, is that it's giving the sauce time to cook down, right? If we just have all those tomatoes in there, um, it cooks really fast and it gets thick really fast. If you add a little bit of water, it just kind of like lengthens your cooking time and gives time for your sauce to kind of get that nice mellow flavor. Okay, I have a couple of Parmesan rinds. Parmesan rinds, if you ever get real Parmesan from Italy, save the rinds. I like them in my sauce, drop them in there, it gives a nice flavor. And then my short ribs can go in. Drop them in. If there's any juice on the plate, put that juice in there. And we're gonna bring this to a simmer. Right, I'm gonna turn it up and we're gonna bring it to a simmer. Any sort of fat or juice goes in. All right, my sauce is coming to a simmer. I'm gonna hit it with some salt and pepper, right? So remember, I said season throughout. And what's a little different about my sauce is I like to put this in the oven, okay? I remember my grandmother having a pot of sauce on the stove all day and cooking it down, but I'm gonna do this in the oven for a couple of reasons, right? My short ribs need to cook low and slow, and the oven will ensure that. Uh, I have a 350 degree oven. I bring this to a simmer. So once it comes to a simmer, I'm gonna take my spoon out. I'm gonna put the lid on and put it in my oven until the short ribs are falling apart and falling off the bone. Right, I have a sheet tray here. I'm gonna put this on a sheet tray just in case it overflows a little. It doesn't overflow into my oven. So this is gonna go into the oven about 350 degrees until the short ribs are nice and tender. All right. All right. So, it's been about two and a half, three hours, okay? It's been in the oven probably about 350, 325. Um, and like I said, I like this method because you get a nice gentle heat. So let's get in there and take a look. Um, I like to scrape down the sides if there's any kind of uh, tomato on the sides. Um, what I like about this is it doesn't scorch on the bottom at all. And what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna go in there and take out the meat, right? Because I'm gonna take this and shred it and put it back in. And what I'm looking for with this is that um, the meat will shred fairly easily, but it's not 
falling apart. I want to have to shred it. So I just want it to be uh, fork tender. That's what I'm looking for. Fork tender being that you have to use a fork to kind of pry it apart. So here's that Parmesan rind. Check that out. It doesn't fall apart. Uh, it just adds a lot of flavor to the sauce. So here's the second one. Okay, take those out. I'm going to let this cool for a second before I get my hands in there. But while I have this here, like I said, I'm going to scrape down the sides. Then I'm going to add uh, some of that basil I had. Remember I put the stems in, but I want to put lots of nice fresh basil in here at the end. So it kind of just like steeps and get that nice basil, basil flavor. Let's throw the basil in. Okay, so I'm going to let the, the meat cool off so I can shred it with my hands and then we'll toss everything back in. All right, it's time to pick the meat. I'm going to wear gloves, uh, not only because it's still a little warm, but um, you know, food safety. The bones, I'm just going to make sure I get all the sauce off of them and I'm going to get rid of them. So get all the meat off the bone. So you see how they slip out really easy? That's a good sign. And all I'm going to do is try and pull this apart, right? If there's any like kind of connective tissue and like hard things, I'm going to just get rid of those, right? But the meat just gets pulled apart. But look, ooh, just nice and tender, but it has to have a little bit of pull. It's not totally falling apart. And that's what I want. Before we plate up, let's check seasoning. Make sure you have your Star Wars R2-D2 spoon. I think it needs a little salt. I'm gonna put a nice pinch of salt in there. Give it a stir. Okay, let's give a final taste. Let me get a nice chunk of meat here. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's meaty, it's delicious. The sauce has like cooked down, it's nice and mellow. Mm. Absolutely delicious. This is a great kind of topping for any sort of pasta. You can put it on top of polenta. You can even chill it down and stuff it into arancini. I have a video to make rice balls here. This would be a great filling for that. You gotta try this. You have to try it. It is a treat. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Uh, we have merch in the description down below. I'd like to thank my Patreon patrons for supporting us. Thank you guys so much. We have a PO box down below as well. And that's it. That's my short rib ragu. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you make it at home. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a great day. <laughs>